Before we continue with the video, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Welcome back to my Create an RPG series. In this episode, we will be continuing to enhance our status effects to make sure that we can communicate a little bit further with some other systems and just add some niceties that we have taken inspiration from when it comes to GAS, the gameplay uh, ability system that Unreal has. Before I do that, though, I want to uh, apologize uh, in case the audio is sounding a little bit odd. I have recently been trying to adjust my audio a little bit to make sure that the pet peeves that some people have with certain noises like keystrokes and such are diminished and not as prevalent. And in my effort to do so, I haven't really managed to get the audio to a point where I'm really super happy with it quite yet. So from now and possibly a few episodes into the future, I might be still tweaking it around, trying to find a good spot where I'm happy with the sound. Uh, so please bear with me while I'm doing so. Anyway, let's jump into our status effects and start doing some cool stuff. So opening up our status effects, this is where we left off. And what we did was we created a poison effect. Now, there might be instances where you don't want to have a status effect actually affect a character. That is why we have the attempt application here. And in those cases, we might want to actually fail adding the status effect. An example of this would be something like if we have our poison status effect as an example, we can with it say that if we're trying to put it on a character that has um, poison immunity on him, for example, and if we try to put poison on that person or that character, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So we might want to have something like that to uh, control if we're able to add the status effect, essentially. So let's show this so it uh, becomes more apparent what I'm actually meaning. To encapsulate this so it's, so it's easier to read, we will make a function, of course. We'll call this uh, check tag start conditions. And in this function, what we will be doing is we will be taking our owner and we want to check against its properties, which is our gameplay tag uh, component. So we'll get component by class. We'll make sure to get the gameplay tag component. Boom. And when we have this now, we want to check what its active con uh, container is. This way we get all of the current tags that the character currently has. Now, with this in mind, we want to check is something preventing us from applying this um, status effect. So we'll need to add a variable. Note now that I'm doing this code in the BP status effect, so the base class, so you don't accidentally do it in the poison or something else. This is functionality that we want in all of the derived children. Uh, this variable we can call something like uh, preventing tags. And this is something that the, the gas system has. It has something like a, a check system against certain tags being present when it tries to do certain things. So that's where the inspiration of this comes from. We want to change the variable type to be gameplay tag container because it might be that we have multiple tags that uh, cause this. And now we want to say, I got our venting tags and we want to type out and have has any. So if we have any of the tags in here, actually we, what we want to do is we want to have the tag container being the active tags and the preventing tags being the other container here. So it compares it like so. And you might want to have exact match if you want the, to have a specific tag uh, and not be checking against some of the parent tags. It depends a little bit about um, what your preferences are and what you're trying to achieve in your system, essentially. But what we can say from this is, if our tag container has any of the tags that are preventing us from doing this, then we don't want to add um, 
this that affects that character. But in addition to that, there might be other circumstances, like you might want to have a tag as a prerequisite to be able to add a status effect. So let's say you have a frozen status effect that makes a character completely freeze in place and not be able to move. Maybe you can only do that if you have first given him another status effect or a property that's called chilled or something. So it's like sort of frozen or maybe wet as in it has been it's dripping with water and therefore it's uh, susceptible to some frozen magic. So we want to take into consideration those kind of things as well. So we'll be creating another variable just like the preventing tags here and we'll be calling this one required tags. So just like preventing tags we will drag out like so and we'll type in uh, instead of has any tags we will type in has all tags because all of the tags in our required category will be needed to get the functionality to work. So we'll drag out our required tags, we'll hook it up and we'll do a branch after that. Now we want to have all the required tags to be present. We'll also add an AND here so we can actually uh, combine these two booleans into one result. So we want to have all the required tags, but we want to have none of the preventing tags, which means that if preventing tags is any of the preventing tags is in the tag container, we'll get a true from here, and that's a, a showstopper for us. So if it doesn't have that, we are in the green. So we'll have a not here, hook it up like so, and this should then give us the circumstance at which we're happy to um, continue. But we don't need to put a branch here. We could just add a return and funnel this information out like so to our uh, code that's going on outside. We can call this uh, boolean apply status effect so we know that this is if it's okay to do it or not. Going back to our event graph, we can now call on our code, check start conditions, and this allows us to see if we're actually able to apply this status effect or not. So adding a branch here, we can now see that during our true condition, that's when we should be starting our status effect. To test this out, we can put in some new uh, tags. So we go to project settings and gameplay tags. We can add a new tag and we can call it um, status effect dot immunity dot poison, for example. So now you see we get this tree of a status effect and immunity and poison. That's all good and fine. Going back to our character now, we can say Actually, we're going back to our poison now. We open up our poison blueprint. We can now say that in its preventing tags here, we put in poison immunity. Okay, so poison here will, will not be applied as long as the, the, the owner has poison immunity is the, the purpose. Compile and save. Go to our character. We'll create our very last numerical input. So keyboard um, zero and from here we will be taking our status effect we will be um, adding a tag sorry not status effect what am I thinking uh, we need to have our gameplay tags our properties essentially so here we can fake that we have added this tag or make it have this property essentially and we'll say the tag tab is supposed to be not immunity, but poison immunity, like so. Uh, to be good, we can also make sure that the origins are everything they're supposed to be. So the actor is adding the tag, is going to be self. The instigate controller is going to be who is causing this to be added. Okay, now remember, on our 9 key, we are adding a poison effect here, which will reduce our health. On 0, we are going to be able to add a tag that gives us poison immunity. So let's test this out. Going out here, we now have the ability to press 9, and you can see that our health will drop down with each periodic event that happens. We lose 10% of our health each time, 3 times. 
Now, if I were to press zero, you can see in the top left, we have an immunity of poison added to us now. And if we press nine now, we can see that the health bar is not moving. So the poison immunity is now preventing the tag or, or the effect of the status effect to happen. So that's all good and fine. However, everything is not all good and fine. Because what's happening here is this false branch here is what's happening. We're not adding the or starting the status effect, which means we're not causing the timers to start, which in addition to that means that we're not getting to the end status effect over here, which means that we actually don't ever remove this status effect. So what we will be doing is we will be taking this functionality here. And since we're going to be doing exactly this thing, we're going to be removing the status effects. And essentially, we're going to be needing all of this. We're going to be encapsulating the, all of this into a macro, essentially. So if we right click and make this into a macro, this is what we're presented with. We can go into it and we can rename this into uh, attempt remove status effects. And it has an execute pin in here. And if we just name it execute, it should become blank. So, and then from here, we want to make sure that we have some outputs of the exec execute version. And we say the first one is uh, status effect removed. And then we'll add another one, which is the same, but we call it uh, uh, unable to remove status effect, let's say. So what we have is a situation where we get our owner, get the class, check if it's valid, we remove the status effect, and if we do, we set it into there. And if it's not valid, we cannot remove the status effect, so we go out here. And like so. Let's make it a little bit prettier. Now going back to our event graph again, you can see that we have our attempt to remove status effect. And in addition to that, we want to have this macro done play over here, like so. And the reason that we did it like this is because over here we did things like we removed timers. And we might have other functionality appearing here as well, but we didn't actually create the timers here because we never reached the start status effect. So we don't really want to call on <clears throat> this event directly. And that's why we're doing just this part. So that's what's happening here. So if we end up with a situation now that we have, we're attempting to add it, we can't because it has a preventing tag. We go to the false, we attempt to remove it from the blueprint components. Because remember, at this point, we have added the actual class of the, uh, go to our blueprint component, I'll show you effects over here, open component here. At this point here, let's see, add that effect, yes, here. So we have it added to our blueprint component and we say that it was added and then we attempt to apply the actual status effect. So if we come here and don't reach the start, we don't go through all of this code and end up doing the end, we don't actually remove it from the blueprint component, which is what this function does over here. And we don't want to end up in a situation where we get defaults over here and we just have a bunch of status effects just lingering around, essentially. So that's why we're going in here to make sure that we're actually removing it, even if we're not applying it. <clears throat> okay, so with that done, I think we're ready for another test. So let's uh, make sure that it's actually happening. We can... Uh, we are going to be trying to remove it a print here saying that is effect removed and then let's do exactly the same test as before so pressing nine will give us a poison effect which will tick down and we should get the status effect removed message there we go now we have added with the zero we have added an immunity for poison and now we try to poison ourselves again and we get immediately that the status effect was removed because it wasn't able to apply it. So that is working. And I think this might be a good place to stop this episode. Hope to see you in the next one.
hopefully found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.